Jeg står her i downtown Austin foran Megasquare. Megasquare det er en skole, der lærer folk at programmere på blot tre måneder. De lover, at man får en verdensklasse programmeringsuddannelse i løbet af de her tre måneder, og det involverer altså blandt andet, at man arbejder mere end 60 timer om ugen. De har seks dages skolegang, og så har de søndagen fri, og i de dage, de går i skole, jamen, der arbejder de 10-12 timer. Jeg har en aftale med Robin Kim, der er det, der hedder Class Lead, lige herinde, så lad os prøve at gå indenfor og se, hvordan det arter sig. Nu har Robin Kim, der er Class Lead, en slags bindeled mellem ledelsen og de studerende lovet og viser os lidt rundt herinde i Megasquare. Så lad os se, hvad han har at vise frem. Awesome. Um, yeah, so, should we, I mean, I don't know, should we just do what we did earlier? Just yep. around and talk about what's here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so these are, uh, so there are, I guess, more here. Uh, we have some couches, some chairs, so uh, especially during lunch breaks or dinner breaks, students can just hang out or if they're doing some solo work on their own, they can uh, come out here. Uh, we have a TV for them with uh, some video games as well. Uh, this is where the students keep all their stuff for the day, but otherwise this is more or less the standard for you know the rest of the day and the week. Uh, most of the time, 80% of the time, they're This is what they're doing, pair programming. Uh, today is the second day of the project, so by the end of the afternoon, it should be done. They'll have watched the solution, and they'll be refactoring and making their code even better to look as you know, beautiful as possible, I guess. So they'll spend most of the time in this room? Most of the time, pretty much. As, as much of the time as possible here, for now. Uh, soon we're going to have another class of students come in at the same time. So we'll have these students and another class of students starting up. So that'll be interesting to see how Uh, we're gonna like incorporate everything together, but uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, we have some chairs up here as well uh, for like, lecture time with the instructors. Um, let's see. And oh, we have our instruction room back over there. We have our fellows and our instructors. Uh, fellows are graduates of the program. The instructors have been here for you know uh, for quite a while with Maker Square, so they they are our JavaScript ninjas. They know everything that there is to know. Uh, so, I don't know if you, did you want to chat with them again? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Okay. Um, hi guys. <laughs> this, is, this is Dave. Uh, he is one of the fellows here. He graduated from our program and now he's working for the school. Uh, a lot, I guess a lot of, I guess a lot of what you do is with the help desk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the students will be pair programming and whenever they're stuck they'll push a button that says help. And it, there's a pop-up on Dave's screen, and he goes over to, to debug anything uh, for them. Yeah. And so are, are you going to sit in this room and, and help him, or will you go out into the, the open room? Well, we wait here. This is kind of we, uh, one of our other guys calls it the dojo. We're just like hanging out in here. They uh, let us work on side projects at the same time to kind of like develop our other skills. Um, when we get a help desk request, it actually will like come up no matter what our screen's doing. And um, it'll like say who the student is in question, what the question is and then we'll kind of discuss like you know if one of us is an expert on that they might just be like oh hey let me take that um for the most part there are questions that we had when we were going through the program and so we just go and like kind of guide them the way that we were guided uh in a way that doesn't give them the answer but sort of just puts them back on the road if they've fallen off steers them slightly to the left or right if that's what they need um and for the most part it uh students find it very helpful to do it that way Um, because what we want is for them to find the answer, not so much like just to go out and give it to them, but the presence of somebody upon whom you can depend uh, definitely means a lot, especially in a high stress environment like pair programming. And so has the, has the content changed since you went here? Oh, yes, sir. Um, when I went through, it was Ruby and JavaScript. We did a lot of stuff in JavaScript. Um, one of our instructors was particularly well-versed in JavaScript, uh, so we were able to learn like a lot of extra details. Um, but the backbone of like, not backbone, but the actual like uh, server framework was done in Ruby for the most part, or Rails, as was the case at the end. Um, this time it's all JavaScript, and I uh, think it's a better idea. It can be a little bit confusing when we had to go back and forth between Ruby and JavaScript. Uh, by teaching everything in JavaScript, you can focus the idea of it being software engineering fundamentals. JavaScript is just the tool through which we do it. Uh, that way you don't have to kind of like, you know, answer a bunch of questions about syntax, or do I use an if, or an end, or brackets or do, that kind of deal. Um, so I, I'm not sure, I haven't done this program, but from the view that I have, I, I think this way is uh, much more effective. And on a typical week, when you, will you go uh, go here each day or? Oh yeah, 
Well, we're not. We don't have to. Um, it's Monday through Saturday for the students anyway, nine to eight p.m. So that's a lot of time. Um, I think any time that they can see instructors kind of you know bearing that brunt with them, um, it helps. Builds like a team camaraderie. Very kind of like a we are all in this together, as opposed to hey we're locking you in this room. You know, good luck. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Man. Jeg sidder her med Robin Kim, der er class lead her på Megasquare. Og class lead, det er sådan en slags bindeled mellem de ansatte og eleverne på skolen. Og jeg har fået lov at snakke med ham en lille smule omkring, hvad det er for en skole, og hvordan hele systemet fungerer her. Så, so, Robin, can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at Megasquare? Sure. Uh, so as the class lead, I'm in charge of the entire student experience. So basically the way I like to think about it is I give them a high five when they first get to the school and I cheer for them the entire time they're here, make sure that they're performing well, you know, emotionally and technically. And as they leave the school and they graduate and get jobs, I give them a high five on the way out. So uh, I am in charge of that whole experience that, during the time here. So some of the work you do is, is uh, would you say, like uh, uh, guidance counseling or...? Uh, that, that's, I, I guess so, that might be part of it. Uh, it's also just keeping a track of how they're doing in class. Uh, so do they think that they're doing well, uh, reassuring them uh, that they are in fact doing well and that we're making sure in the, uh, behind the scenes that we're taking care of them or giving them the extra support that they need. And so what is the, uh, the, the, the essence of, uh, of Maker Square? Can you, can you explain about that? Uh, what, what do you mean by the essence of Maker Square? I mean, what, what is the, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, the, the, the thing that, that Maker Square does that, that other schools uh, are not doing? Or uh, what is the, the, the philosophy behind it, I guess? Gotcha. Uh, I think just the ap- approach we have in terms of like creating like software engineers with, with the people and the staff that we have in the environment that we create, I think that's very different uh, because it's, it's very high energy. Uh, we are... Uh, like we focus our curriculum on projects, two-day projects. So the students are working on it together all the time. So that all, all that collaboration, I think, is what really makes uh, Maker Square such a great place to be, both as a student and as staff. And how does the, how does this work with regard to the the United States education system? Is this part of the of, of that system? No, this is this is definitely not part of the normal United States uh, you know, tr- traditional education system. Uh, normally, you would you know maybe we have a We have two-year colleges in the United States or four-year universities for your bachelor's degree. Uh, here we have a three-month you know, career accelerator, basically, which is highly unusual. You wouldn't spend you know, this short of a time being able to jump into a career uh, like software engineering. And so how do you, I, I imagine it's important to kind of build, the, 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 build up the reputation of the, uh, of the school. And how, how would you go about that? How does that work? You know? I think the most important thing is for us to make you know, to, to craft very highly qualified engineers. And once they go out into the workforce, then the word starts spreading like, hey, did you hear about this Makersquare graduate? You know, they're at our company and they're doing awesome here. We need to get more Makersquare graduates, you know, and then they'll come back to us, uh, hire from our, you know, current pool of students. Uh, so I think that's one of the most important ways, just making sure that, you know, our students are very well trained here. Uh, but it's, you know, it's also a, a bit of, uh, you know, extending out to other people and making sure that we're known amongst other people as well. Cool. So, say I wanted to to start here mm-hmm. uh, and and do your course. What what uh, prerequisites would I need to be, before I I can attend? Right. Uh, so some schools are like a zero to sixty type of school uh, where you don't have any prior knowledge, and we will take it all the way to full speed. Uh, we like to say that we're you know like twenty twenty to like one twenty instead. Uh, so you have to know a little bit before you come to Maker Square. So you have to know the basics of JavaScript. Uh, like it's really the basics. You just have to be able to Uh, recognize like how do you write uh, you know an object in an array how do you write a function and uh, we have a whole admissions process that screens for that uh, and once you do that then you can do uh, we actually assign pre-course work as well so you have to do some projects before you actually step into make your square doors and then we'll take you on from there and so that that work is is part of the admissions process and and uh, is that the first the first thing that you have to do Uh, I guess the first thing is applying to the school on the website, and there's a small coding challenge that you have to pass. Once you pass the coding challenge, you get uh, scheduled an interview with us, and it's a technical interview. We'll test your uh, your knowledge in JavaScript, and once you pass that, once you're admitted to the school, then we give you access to the pre-course work. Maybe you'll work on it for four to six weeks, and then you start the school. 
Okay, and and so at the time I'm starting the pre-course work, I will. I'm sure that I that I can come here and start. Is that, is that correct? If you finish your pre-course work, yes. you have to finish before you come in. Okay, yeah. Um, who who's the, the the typical student? Do you have a, a typical kind of maker square DNA for for the students? I don't think we have a typical student because people come from all sorts of different backgrounds. Uh, if I had to give maybe an average age, if I had to make you know, if I had to figure one out, probably in the the high twenties mid to high 20s uh, but our students you know some of them have high school diplomas some of them have been through university some of them have master's degrees uh, some have never worked before others have worked in the industry for 20 to 30 years so all sorts of different backgrounds and what about the the gender question um, is it uh, how how many percent uh, male and female uh, I actually don't have the numbers for that but uh, it's it's more men than uh, women, but uh, it's it's not uh, like we make sure that it's a very uh, like inclusive environment for for the women that are here. And do you know how the the idea for for Make a Square got born? I mean, where where does where did the original idea came from? Uh, I know uh, I, I can say that there. So Maker Square was founded uh, about a couple of years ago, and they were one of the first couple of schools in Austin. Uh, and this was when a, a lot of other coding schools were popping up uh, across the, or a few of the few other coding schools were popping up across the country. So I think uh, I think MakerSquare believes that we could create software engineers better than any other school out there. And that's why we're here right now. And once you once you start your your education here, what what do you do you learn? I mean, what is uh, what is the actual content of, of the, the three months I will be I will be spending here if I start? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're a full stack JavaScript school. Uh, so that means we will teach you how to make you know beautiful front end uh, you know web apps and all the way to the back end server stuff with Node.js. Uh, and we will we actually just use JavaScript as a teaching tool for computer science. Uh, uh, I guess basics. Uh, so it's, it's it's a teaching tool. Uh, students often do coding projects in other languages, uh, side projects, or uh, after they graduate from here, they might apply for companies that don't even use JavaScript. So uh, that's what we teach here. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, how often do you start new uh, new new courses? How often do you start over? Uh, every seven weeks, we admit a new cohort, so they're always overlapping and. Uh, each cohort is here for three months. Mm -hmm. And how big is each cohort? How many uh, students? The, the size ranges. Uh, it's, it's about a typical classroom. So somewhere, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if we, so we, we don't officially say exactly how many students we have, but uh, I like to think somewhere between the 20s and 40s where, you know, we like to keep our class size somewhere in there. And so uh, a, day, a day for the students starts when and when does it finish? Uh, it's a 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Wow, it's that, pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty intense. And yeah. and so, uh, do you have any extracurricular activities, or, or will they just uh, go home and get some sleep? Uh, we have after hours activities at eight o'clock. So we might bring in some other engineers uh, who work in the area to give some advice, or we might have you know, just a fun social activity just to wind down at the end of the day. Uh, it's just uh, you know we do we do whatever we feel like the students need to just you know feel supported and feel. Uh, you know, energized to come to school the next day, and to to help the the, the students on. Do you have any Do you have any activities that that uh, help them them uh, go out and, and get a job? Because I, I saw on your website that mm -hmm. that you uh, you say you have a ninety six percent success rate for mm -hmm. people to to go out and get a job afterwards. Yeah. Uh, so we have an entire hiring curriculum built into uh, into our into our school. Uh, so the first six weeks, they're learning a lot of JavaScript. The second six weeks, they're working on their projects. And then we start introducing, you know, how do you write your resume? How do you write a cover letter? How do you start interviewing at technical jobs? Uh, and we, uh, at the end, finish with a hiring day event. Uh, we will we'll invite local uh, hiring partners. Uh, and we, we like to go above and beyond and offer hiring support even after they graduate. Okay. And and uh, what what does it what does it take to start a, a coding school here in the U.S.? I mean, did you know any of, of the of the parts that that uh, that, that need to be in place? Uh, as, a, as a class lead, I don't know if I can say confidently, but I, I know it requires a lot of work. Uh, you have to get some uh, very very smart people in the same room together. You know, it's because it, there's a lot of a lot of uh, 
like business operation side of things that you know I don't work with right now. But you have to you know take care of all of that. You have to get instructors. You have to get students, and that's none of that is easy work. Um, the 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 price of uh, of admission here. How how much is that? How how many uh, how many um, dollars do you have to do you have to put up front? Mm -hmm. It's about seventeen thousand dollars for the three months yes. course. Mm -hmm. Um, and how is that compared to to a, a, a regular uh, computer studies program in sure. at a university? Uh, so it's about one academic term, maybe a semester or a quarter. So it's uh, when we can do that in the same amount of time with that. Well, maybe, let me rephrase. So in a, in a university, you'd have to pay four years of them of that amount two or three times a year. Here, you can just do that once. So it's a it's a good investment on that part. Mm -hmm. um, I read on the on on your website that there is an advisor team. Ah yes. Uh, do, do you know what role what role the the advisor team has? Uh, I I I think you might be referring to the the hiring advising team. I, I don't know exactly. Yeah, that that could be it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so we have, uh, yeah. So we have so we have staff that work here who will work one on one with students and mentor them and make sure that they can get jobs after they graduate from here. Just to make sure that we can, you know, we do our absolute best to make sure that they can get a job within three months from graduating from Maker Square. So they work very closely with all the students and make sure that they're applying to jobs that they're getting the interviews that they want. Cool. And uh, are these people that are actually working, uh, that are uh, embedded, if you will, in at, at the, the organizations, the, the, the tech companies here in Austin? Uh, I guess our, uh, our dedicated staff is, you know, works here at our Makersquare office, but we do have alumni who are working in other, you know, Austin tech companies, and they will frequently come back and hire our graduates because they love the experience that they had and, and, uh, and they want more people like them. Or we have You know, just managers who have seen Maker Square graduates come into their companies, and they say we need more software engineers like that, so they'll come back here as well. And and what about yourself? What what did you do before you became the class lead here? Uh, before I came, before I became a class lead, I worked a little bit as a financial advisor. Uh, I got my stockbroker's license, and I said I don't really want to do it. Worked in retail for a little bit. Uh, then I actually decided to go through the curriculum myself. I learned JavaScript when I knew very little in the beginning. Uh, then I started working for the school here. So you actually went through the an online version of, of what everyone is doing here. Yeah. So I went through a yeah I, I went through an online version 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. still, and we saw and we had our instructors with on a video chat all the time. So it was just as intense, if not more. <laughs> Only you had to you had to be somewhere else. Uh, yeah. I just, I, yeah. Yeah. I had to be. Uh, I was in Cali Southern California at that time, uh, and I went through uh, actually actually uh, actually went through the Hack Reactor Remote Beta curriculum. Um, so I could still be at home and uh, take care of my sister and mom while doing the course. Wow. And so did you get hired immediately after that? Or? Uh, I ended up working for uh, uh, San Francisco for a few months, and then now I'm here in Austin. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking your time to talk to us. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks for having me. Nu sidder jeg med en studerende her fra Makersquare, og jeg har tænkt, at vi lige kan prøve at snakke en lille smule om, hvordan det er at gå her på skolen. Hi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about uh, about your name and your background first thing? Uh, my name's Anya, and I'm actually, I was born in Hawaii, and my work background is completely random. Like, I was teaching and modeling in Taiwan, and then I was working at Starbucks. I was a restaurant hostess at some point, and now I'm doing this. <laughs> and how did you get the idea to, to uh, attend Makersquare? It was really... I just decided I was gonna get into this field, and Maker Square had such high, well, everything really. Like they had a great curriculum, they had all good reviews, they had great percentages of hiring rates. And when I came to visit, I had actually previously gotten accepted somewhere else, but I decided I just I liked everything here so much, so I thought it would be a good way to go. So you moved to Austin from Taiwan. Yeah, I was there a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And how, how long have you been at the school right now? Um, I've been here, this is week three now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three weeks in. But how did, how, did you get the, how did you get the idea to apply? How did you, do, did you decide to go into to programming? I just, yeah, I mean, I started on Codecademy. I just thought like, well, I'll try it out and see what it's like. And then the more I got into it, the more I decided this was just what I was going to do. Um, how, how did you pay for tuition? Is, i took out a loan. Like right. I, before this, I had very little savings, so I just went all out and took out a huge loan and 
yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> and this, is, is that a normal thing to do in, in the States when you, when you, you do education? Yeah, well, especially, I mean, if you think about university costs, so many people leave with just huge thousands and thousands of dollars of loans that they owe before they can even get a job. And with this, I felt like it was a relatively small loan compared to what most students end up with at the end of a university. And the fact that the job placement was so great in such a short time after this, I thought it was definitely worth it. So would you say that that you really have to to be uh, quite uh, quite aware of of, of the, the 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 time after you graduate when you when you choose your your education? Yes, I I definitely um, after high school I went to university and realized that this was going to take you know years before I could ever potentially work, and so I took time off and decided you know to figure out what I want to do, and when it came down to it, I didn't. I didn't want to go and have to work towards something for another four or five years before I could even start. So time was a big factor with this. And a typical day uh, it's on, 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 <laughs> on Maker Square, what, what, is it, what does it uh, look like? It's pretty crazy. Uh, it's usually 12 hours. Um, so we get here around 8.30 in the morning. Um, we have like 30 minutes of chit chat and then it starts off with like a toy problem to kind of warm us up. And it's a lot of coding actually. Like we, we have some good lectures and um, but it's it's just a lot of like coding with different partners, which I enjoy. It's they definitely emulate uh, a workplace as much as they can. But it's yeah, it's it's long days. And and how does it work with the with the pair programming? You you sit right next to each other and yeah, we're actually on. It feels like a conjoined twin because one mouse controls both both computer screens. So um, every new problem sprint, we have like a different partner or pair that we're going to work with, and we work on these conjoined twin screens. <laughs> and um, yeah, just plug away at it for two days. But you really get to know each other and work with different people. So. It's and is it a new person you sit next to each day? Yeah, every other day we get new people for new sprints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, twelve hours a day, six days a week. Yeah. What <laughs> What is that like? I mean, it's. I actually, I'm surprised. I thought I would be, you know, exhausted a lot of the time or feeling the hours, but it's kind of flown by. Like at the end of the day, I could stay longer. I could code more. I could. I don't know. It's. It's definitely part of the environment I think that helps that like the staff is great the people are great and on your spa's uh, spare time what what, what do, you do? Time? Do, 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 do you do do you go home and program uh, more I, I go home and I try not to it's hard but yeah I try to just relax and get some decent sleep because the next day it's definitely going to be enough time to program do you imagine that that once you once you graduate and and uh, and go out and hopefully get a job really fast? Uh, do you imagine that your days are going to be as crazy as here? I mean, do do you think that this this way of of doing uh, education reflects a kind of uh, work ethics uh, on the other side of it? I definitely think it would help, especially initially, because in this industry there's so much to learn for so long. There's never really a wall that you hit where you're now an expert. So I think this kind of intensive program helps set you up for when you get that new job and there's so much that you have to learn at this new company um i think it's a good way to go about it and set us up for success and you don't mind doing and uh, doing 12 hour days here and then go out and, and getting a job and doing more 12 hour days no i mean 12 hour days for a few months is better than four years of four years of i mean some people do 12 hour days in university studying and stuff so hmm. And what about family? And can you just will you just postpone uh, time with them? Um, well, I actually, since I moved out here, my family's all over the world. Like my, I have family in Hawaii and Spain and Singapore, so it's mostly keeping in touch with them anyway, just via chats. But they're all super excited about what I'm doing, so they're they're like, I'll text you on Sunday, <laughs> I'll call you on Sunday. But yeah, they're all very supportive. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you graduate, what will what will be your dream job? My dream job, I guess I would like to work for a company that's doing something good. I guess maybe something that just has 
a cause that I support or yeah, it's just doing something that people need. Mm-hmm. Um, do, and do, do you ever lose motivation here? Do, do you ever, do you ever meet encounter problems that, 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 uh, that just kind of gets to you? Um, I felt like that before I came here when I was coding on my own, I would get stuck and not know what to do. But here I feel like with the people that they have and the support from the staff, I never really hit a point where I think I can't do this. I just think, okay, I'm stuck and maybe I need some guidance and I'll figure it out. And what about the, 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 the people you study with? Have you made, have you made a lot of friends in, uh, amongst your, your, uh, your fellow students? Yeah, it's, it's crazy how spending this much time with people every day, just after a couple of weeks, I feel like I know a lot of them very well already. And so uh, what now when you, when you graduate? Will you, are you going to stay in Austin? Yeah, I'm gonna hopefully stay in Austin and work for a startup or a company here, and um, just keep climbing up. <laughs> and do you have any companies in mind? If you if you could pick juice, I don't know. Um, there's a company Heal Code that seems pretty interesting. Um, I haven't really looked at specific companies yet, but I'll have to start that soon. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Thank you.